Hello everyone. Welcome to Update Tuesday. So I know we are all um, working on hunkering down as much as we can right now because of the COVID-19 virus and we are trying to social distance which is fantastic because sometimes we need that time alone anyway. I'm gonna get my video pulled up here. Um, today for Update Tuesday, Stampin' Up! focused on this fantastic punch box on page 94 of the annual catalog. I'm going to move it up just a little bit on my screen here. This is called the Darling Label Punch Box, and it comes in this fantastic um, tin, and I'm going to show you everything that you get in it right now. Let me set this catalog aside out of the way so I can pull the tin because it's actually bigger than you think. Look how big that is. I think it's eight and a half by eight and a half. Let me just check the measurements on the page here. I'm sorry, eight by eight by three inches deep. So you get the tin and inside the tin, you're going to get a Grapefruit Grove stamping spot. You are going to get a Knight of Navy stamping spot. You will get this amazing little stamp set it has hello, thinking of you, Congratulations, Rockstar, best wishes, happy birthday, friend, and thanks. So you get the six-piece stamp set. You get a stamping block. It's a little different than our regular stamping blocks, but it's almost as thick. It's just a little different around the edges, but it's a fantastic block, especially for beginners and just to build up your block collection. You get the block. And then you get the Darlene label punch. No, I put my own labels on these. They don't have labels on them. That way I can always reference it when I'm in a video, like right now, in case I was using it without the entire set. So this is what you get in the set. Now this is $45. Now what's fantastic about this tin is you can reuse it. You can gift cards in it. You can keep stamping supplies in it for on the go. You can put sewing supplies in it if you want, like grandma used to do. You can use it for whatever you want. Add five more dollars to your purchase, like with adhesive or paper or cardstock, something else that you want, and you've got a free celebration item through the 31st. So just wanted to make sure you were all aware of that. I'm going to get this out of the way. I'm just going to set these aside so you can still see what's in the kit, and I'll leave the stamp set here too. The punch we'll put right here. We're actually not going to use the punch for this card today because it wasn't used in the card that I'm making, but that's okay. It's still a super cute card and you're going to love it. So what do you think of this card? Is that not adorable with all the little rainbow stripes that go down it? I think it's fantastic. I think it's bright. It's cheery. Um, if you wanted to, you could do the happy birthday friend probably three times down the center to make a cute birthday card. You could use any of these sentiments really, but we will focus on the hello sentiment today. So there's the card that we're going to make. Now we're gonna start with a piece of thick whisper white cardstock folded in half. I've already done that, but I'm gonna give it another crease with that bone folder real quick. And then take a, another piece of just regular whisper white cardstock and you're going to trim it so it's just a quarter of an inch smaller than the card front because that is what we are going to adhere all of our little stripes to. And I'm gonna go ahead and list them all and just lay them out so you can see we have Poppy Parade, Melon Mambo, Petal Pink, Mango Melody, So Saffron, Granny Apple Green, Coastal Cabana, Bermuda Bay, Pacific Point and Gorgeous Grape. Now, if you wanted to just work on adhering them to the front of your card, you could do it that way too. But for me, I thought it was easier to put them on here. And then I'm gonna show you a little trick in just a minute. Let me push these over just a little bit more to the side so they're out of the way. So definitely for the first strip, I would use Tombow for sure. You don't have to use it for every strip, but the nice thing about using it is that you can move your strip around just a little bit and then kind of make sure it's even with the top of your card. Then if you wanted to, you could use snail adhesive and just do a strip like this, butt it up against, and make sure it's even. Now, it's not as easy, obviously, to move around. So, personally, because look, I already got that crooked just from doing it that way. Let me kind of lift it off just a little bit with my paper piercing tool if I can and straighten it out so because we don't want all of our layers to go down crooked there we go so 
do it however you want, but I would definitely recommend the Tombow just because you can move them around a little bit. We'll get a little bit of glue on that corner. All right, so just another strip and another paper strip. That's all you're gonna do for this entire card all the way down. But it looks so cute when you get it done. I think it would be fantastic if you did it in an ombre card, like with all blue tones or oranges or, you know, oranges and yellows, reds and oranges. I think um, a beautiful green tone one would be would have been pretty for today with it being St. Patrick's Day. But since this was the card that Stampin' Up! did, this is the one I'm doing. Just make a cute little rainbow card. And I do like the way the Tombow is working because it's just enough that you can still, you can lay it down and then butt it up against because you can slide it across the card, which is fantastic. And for once, I'm not covered in glue, which is even better. Now you can see my layers are getting, they're going a little bit crooked. And that's because of that pink one, that Melon Mambo one that I did was a little bit crooked, but that's okay. We're still going to go with it. And I'm going to show you how to trim it up in just a second. So it'll at least be somewhat straight. Let's hope it's somewhat straight when we get done. Otherwise, we're going to have a little bit crooked stripes on this card. But that's okay. We don't care. It's all good. It's still going to be cute. Do any of you have this adorable punch box? If you do, have you used it? What have you made with it? It's not too horribly crooked, just a tiny bit. But because we have this fantastic little trimmer, I was I almost put tried to put the lid from the <laughs> from my take your pick tool onto my glue. So this little trimmer comes in handy. Now you can see how it's just a little bit crooked. I'm just gonna slide it in here. Make sure I'm butted up against the top because I know that is straight. And just trim a little bit off from the edge just to straighten that edge out. Now we're cutting through two pieces of cardstock and they're not quite dry with the glue. So gotta be careful. I might get my blade a little bit sticky. And if that happens, I will just use an alcohol wipe to clean that off later. I'm not gonna do that. While everyone is watching, you don't need to see that. Now, because the bottom, now that I have this side straight, I can just bring that purple over, just to trim it a little bit. It's gonna make that purple strip just a little bit thinner, but that's all right. And then we will just trim this edge as well. And like I said, because it's two layers thick, it's still a little wet, it's not wanting to go quite through as fast, but it will go through. And then you've just trimmed that up so all of your edges are um, straight. And it's already if your layers look a little bit crooked, it's, the card is still gonna be adorable. So then just take that, and here's where I would just use snail on the back of this. And just adhere it to that front of that little note card that we cut out. And then you'll have a little white border all the way around it. Perfect, right? Love it, love that little rainbow card. So now you've got a um, strip of Whisper White cardstock and we will use the Banner Triple Punch. We'll put it in the Banner Triple Punch. And when you flip it over, just make sure you kind of have it as centered as you possibly can get it in there. Trim that end off. And then we're gonna use some of that Grapefruit Grove ink because that is one of the colors that comes in your little punch box and we're going to use the hello stamp now when I did it I started down here at the bottom because I wanted to make sure I need to flip that over because I didn't get it inked all the way um, I wanted to make sure I had it one right at the bottom and then I could go up from there and then once you have four of those stamped you can close up your ink because we are done with that part of it now we have some Whisper White Baker's Twine, but in the card, that Baker's Twine is a petal pink color. So we're going to measure about 12 inches of it. That's about all you need, one ruler length. And that'll be plenty for your bow. Just trim that off. And then you will have just enough to tie your bow and we're going to color it. We are going to use the Petal Pink 
Stampin' Blend. This is the Petal Pink Dark Stampin' Blend. Now, if you wanted it a brighter color, a different color, use a different Stampin' Blend. But I kind of wanted to stay with what Stampin' Up! had done with their card. So I just took that and folded it in four because we want to just go over it with the edge of our Stampin' Blend marker. And these are alcohol-based, so it dries pretty quickly. You could also do this with the water-based Stampin' Write markers. It wouldn't dry as fast, and it might take you a little bit longer because uh, just because it doesn't dry as fast. But just color it in as good as you can. It's not gonna be perfect. Now, sometimes with ribbon, because you only have you know one side, it's easier to color. But you can also do this. You can run it through, swipe it, turn it around as much as you can, run it through and swipe it some more. Doesn't, like I said, doesn't have to be 100% perfect and 100% petal pink. It's okay if it has a little bit of variation in it. It's not gonna make a difference. It's still gonna look really adorable on your card. So then just tie a little bow. And then bring it down because you don't want the bow to be huge. Now I like to put my finger in a loop just to kind of make the loops approximately the same size. They don't have to be perfect. Your tails don't have to be the same length. You can trim them however you want them. Now you could use a regular mini glue dot from one of our rolls of glue dots. Now these are a little bit bigger than some of the ones that we get in our paper pumpkin boxes. So if you have some leftover from paper pumpkin boxes, use one of these tiny little ones. They're just tiny and they're perfect. And when you get them on your card, on your little piece, you can just kind of fold it a little bit with your, take your pick tool and then stick that bow right on there. So never throw away your glue dots from your paper pumpkins. Go ahead and flip this over. Remember I made a little boo-boo when I stamped that first part, no big deal. We'll just get some stamp of dimensionals on there, put one in the center, a couple at the top. Take your backings off, super easy to make this card. I love how easy this card is to make. And even if your layers are a little crooked like this, my card is right now, it's still gonna be adorable. Center this from left to right and then bring it to the top of that poppy parade strip and adhere it down. Now I'm gonna cut this tail so they're about the same length. I just wanna even them out there. And then I don't have very many of these left. So these are the glitter enamel dots. Obviously I need to order more of these. Go ahead, I don't have this um, Coastal Gabbana on this card, but now that I'm making this card for you all to see, we'll put that Coastal Gabbana, we'll put a Granny Apple Green, we'll put a Gorgeous Grape one, and a Melon Mambo glitter enamel dots. Now these are fantastic because they just have that um, silver glitter sparkle to them, which I think is adorable. And there's your finished card. How long did this take us? Maybe 10 minutes? Now, of course, that doesn't include um, cutting the strips that I had to cut. And I just um, will have all of those measurements. Super easy to get those strips cut. It doesn't take long. But I want to show you while we are sitting here, I'm going to grab um, a scrap of Whisper White and we will go ahead and stamp each one of these stamps and then show you how it punches out with that punch that comes in this punch box. Because I think it's important that you see how versatile these are and how cute they look when you get them punched out. So we will stamp, we're gonna, just gonna use Grapefruit Grove because that's what we have right here. We will get that Hello stamped. Clean that off. start with the Rockstar stamp next. This one says, congratulations, Rockstar. And when you look at my blog post, there is gonna be another card that they made with this congratulations, Rockstar stamp, which I think is really cute and would be another simple one to do. It just involves a lot of punching. And I believe they stamped this maybe three times to go on that card. So it just, and it just came together really cute. I love the way they did it. This one says, thinking of you. We have our happy birthday. 
happy birthday friend. Make sure I've got it inked up well because that's got a solid image on there. Around that birthday, it's got that solid image and I didn't put um, a piercing mat under this like I normally would. And then best wishes. All right, so that is the last one. So let's punch them all. Now, the only one that's not gonna punch everything is the Sphinx, and that's because the leaves are coming off from that, but that's okay. I'm just gonna give you a glimpse of what each of these looks like once they're punched out. And obviously, you could do these in any color that you wanted. It doesn't have to be the colors that come in your punch box. You probably have other colors at home. And if you don't, then just use the colors that are in your punch box. The Knight of Navy and the Grapefruit Grove, which are fantastic colors together. So there's what they all look like punched out. Now, as you can see, they leave a little border. So even with that thanks, there wasn't that much that didn't punch out. It was just a little bit of the leaves. So you do see the flowers and they're all on there. So you can color those flowers in if you want to for making a different card. But I hope you enjoyed today's Update Tuesday. I hope you check back with me. I'm gonna try in the next few days to do some more live videos because I know we are all in need of something fun to keep our minds off of everything that is happening right now and to give us something extra to do. So get out those craft supplies, get your kids involved if they're home. I'll try to do some easy things maybe that kids can be involved in. This would be one fantastic card for a kid to make. It's super easy. They could totally gl glue strips of paper down. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great rest of your evening and I live and love to inspire you. Bye.